would thoroughly get to know, uh, like to get to know you, and we uh, have, have great joy. We try to have a renewal on our way over here uh, to the renewal in, in the car, talking about all the things we'll speak about and, and uh, going over the text, and so we try to preach your sermons before you get a chance to, and uh, we just really uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy you all, enjoy uh, those of like precious faith, and <clears throat> there's a particular atmosphere among the saints of God that, is, that I kind of cherish. <clears throat> And uh, I really don't, um, I don't have much uh, excellency of speech and wisdom of words, and so I, I'm grateful that you're not really interested in that anyway, uh, but really in uh, just the preaching of the gospel, which, which I plan on declaring uh, this morning. But you see, it's a, this text is really profound. It's really been a, a minister to me uh, in the past few weeks. Um, <clears throat> for one, it's the truth. Uh, and what I want to really affirm uh, this morning is that uh, that Christ actually consecrated this way, and, and it's, a, it's a new way, and it's a living way. <clears throat> See, it's the tendency of man uh, to think more highly of himself than he ought. Uh, but they are not, as, as they suppose, generally good. By one man, sin entered the world, and death by sin. And since then, it's been downward. <clears throat> I know that this has escaped the attention of many, but it's nevertheless, it's true. And when God comes looking for them, they hide. And when he spoke from a holy mountain, they asked for him to stop and another to speak. And when he called, they didn't recognize who it was. Maybe they thought it thundered. And when he sent them, sometimes they fled and went another way. He said of them, they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder, stopped their ears that they should not hear. See, we and men in general have been walking according to the course of this world and have been blinded by its ruler. They were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath. They were foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. As is written, there is none righteous. There is not that to seek after God. They have all gone out of the way, together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, and with their tongues they have used deceit, and the poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing, bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. This is a description of man. It's a divine description of man, so we don't really have to speculate as to the constitution of man. And so bound by an evil conscience and enslaved to sin, even their sacrifices and offerings to God only reminded them of their dreaded condition. You see, sin had separated them from their God, and the law, while holy, just, and good, only created death in them. Thus, every one of their mouths were stopped and all became accountable to God. And all they could do is run and hide from this holy God as his words hounded them in the night watches. Vengeance belongeth to me. I will recompense. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. And so I ask you, son of man, can these bones live? <laughs> Lord, you know. If people like this could never correct their own condition, that's what we're talking about this week, is that something had to be done for them. Something big had to be done. Something effective had to be done. Something that could reach up into the heavenly places and reach down to earth. Something that could please the Father and yet change man. <clears throat> well, praise God, something did happen. <laughs> so when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that they might receive the adoption as sons. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And he himself bare our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. And this is he whom God had set forth to be a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the entire world. God laid the iniquity of us all upon him and condemn sin in the flesh. And this was in accordance that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, 
and deliver them who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. And now those same people who were once alienated are no longer running from God, being their enemies, and hiding because of their sin, because their sin has been put away and now they flee to God. There's a big difference. Now they seek refuge under his wings, knowing that Jesus has put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And yes, brethren, we are not of them that draw back on the perdition, but of them that believeth to the saving of the soul. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Amen. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. What I want to talk about is, uh, has to do with the eternal purpose of God, the new covenant, better covenant, Amen. that Christ Jesus our Lord has consecrated a way, and he's consecrated a way for us. And it's a living way, and it's a new way, and it's something, it's a way that he has made in our behalf. And I want to make a point about that, that he made a way. See, when talking about the purpose of God, when talking about the new covenant, you want to see that this is a way that was made for us. That it's not, it's not a way among many ways, you see. It wasn't an existing way that seemed to God, well, this one works best, so let's try this out. You see, it was a way that had to be made for us. And this all owing to the frailty of the flesh. We needed someone to make a way for us. Amen. <clears throat> Something that could be inaugurated or opened up or put forth. And that's exactly what Christ did. And, in fact, he's the only one that is able to do so. You see, it's man's task to find a way. We, we, got, we have to find the way and then take it. It's God's manner to, to just make a way, to just, <laughs> just cause one. <clears throat> He's always done this. Whether it be at the Red Sea with Pharaoh and his army behind us, he just, he'll just make a way. Or even at the Jordan River, uh, even if it was flood season, I suppose, <laughs> he'll just make a way. How about you find yourself in the belly of a great fish? He'll just, he'll just make a way. This is how God is. He just makes a way. And, and, and you have to know this about God if you're going to live by faith. Whatever may be your circumstances, you don't really focus on the circumstances. You just look for God to make a way. Amen. And, of course, this is, this is what he does. For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You've got to know this about God. For when the enemy encamps around you, and you're being ambushed by fiery darts from the evil one, when temptations abound... If you know this about God, you can be confident because you know he's able to make a way, a way of escape. We're talking about a consecrated way. We're talking about the only way. Even, you can even see that in, in, in the law. Whatever was consecrated, it was the only things that could be used. The consecrated things were the only things that could be used. When we're talking about a consecrated way, this is the only way. It is a set-apart way. It's, a, it's chosen of God as the only way into the holiest and the only way to the Father. And it's a way for us. See, man is not left to create his own way to the Father. God would not leave such an important task to us. This is something that would be provided for us. Something that no ordinary man can do. Something that only the man could do. <laughs> the man Christ Jesus. This was something that had to be done on our behalf. And this way was made through the flesh of Jesus. When God had placed the iniquity of us all upon him, and he made him who knew no sin to be sin, and Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, and the just died for the unjust in order to bring us to God. Amen. And when sin was laid upon him, who could forget his cry? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he was not crying for Elijah to save him, but rather crying out in anguish, as he bore the iniquity of us all. His body was broken, and he gave up the ghost. And it's no coincidence, brethren, that as sin was condemned in the flesh, that it was at that moment that the veil was torn from top to bottom. For Jesus has consecrated a new and living way for us 
through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Now it's a way into the a way into the holiest. <laughs> the, the, the whole, this is the primary place. The, the holiest. We're not just talking about a way uh, to any other place. The point is that where it's going. It's a place into the holiest. <clears throat> if there's ever a place to be, that's it. Amen. And if there's ever a way, this is the way. Amen. And of course, this has reference to the tabernacle. The tabernacle seemed to function as a sort of, there was, there was consistent in a series of barriers that actually kept us separated from God for our own good. <clears throat> Only certain men could enter at specific times through various ordinances, meticulous manners, and even still, fellowship with the Father was at a minimal. <clears throat> and the reason for that is simple. These things served only as a copy, a shadow of good things to come. But the substance is of Christ. The restrictions that man faced prior to the work of our Lord was not owing to a deficiency in the law. It was owing to a deficiency within us. Finding fault with them, he created a new and living way. Amen. Your sin has separated you from your God, the Lord said. But see, now that sin has been put away by the sacrifice of Christ, now that he has made an end of sin, now that God has laid the iniquities upon him, now that God has condemned sin in the flesh of Jesus, yes, now, by the blood of Christ, we have access into the holiest. For what the law could not do, God did in Christ. Amen. And so the emphasis in salvation is not simply, it's not as though we only have a way out of something. <laughs> we got a way into something. Amen. And that's really the focus here. You don't just want to get out of Egypt. You want to get into Canaan. Amen. And you don't just want to get out of hell. You got to get into heaven. Amen. And that's what we're talking about. This, this new and living way which he consecrated for us is into the holiest, is a way to the Father. <clears throat> We have access, access to the Father. What a thought. You see, the real essence of the holiest is the presence of God, heaven itself. And it is God who makes it holy. <laughs> For without God, the holy place is just a place. Without God, holy ground is just ground. You see, God is what makes the place holy. <clears throat> so having boldness to enter the holiest is having boldness to stand before the God of heaven, to stand in his presence, to be comfortable there, to desire to be there, and for him to accept you. Scripture says, Now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Not be ashamed before him. You've got to be on the new and living way in order, to, in order to confess that, in order to not be ashamed at his coming. Amen. This boldness is not the result of, 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 uh, of us somehow being perfected in the flesh, but rather is a direct result of what Christ accomplished for us on the cross. Amen. Our boldness to enter the holiest is through the blood of Christ. Amen. For we've been reconciled unto him in the body of his flesh through death. And this was not without purpose, but in order to present us holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. We have boldness to enter his presence because he has put away sin and reconciled us to himself. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> See, that's a lofty task. This sort of thing often isn't even mentioned. But this is what God is doing. You see, Christ didn't, didn't die in order to just bring you to church. But you, you well, you would think, and you, you laugh at that, but you, you would think that that was really the main purpose. To bring us to church. <clears throat> he didn't die just to make us happy. He didn't die so we could have pitching dinners, coat drives, and rock concerts. And while I'm not opposed to some of these things, the... I think the time for small thinking and elementary teaching concerning what was accomplished at the cross of Christ needs to stop. We really got to declare what exactly happened. And you're not even going to see it through the eyes of the flesh. If God didn't reveal what had happened on the cross, no one would know. What we saw, what man saw, that was just surface. And I'm not trying to minimize that. But what God did, did to him is more important. What God had accomplished through that. See, God is in the business of gathering all things together in Christ. And Christ is in the business of handing over all things, namely the kingdom of God, to God. <clears throat> Therefore, if you've been gathered to Christ, you've been joined to the Lord. He's now bringing you to God to present you holy and unblameable in, in his sight. 
You see, a way has been made in a wilderness and a path has been made to our God through Christ. So what should we say of these things? Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Amen. There's no other conclusion. <laughs> there's, just, there's just really no other conclusion. That kind of text just becomes commonplace to speak those things. I guess by way of testimony, there was a time when I didn't really realize that. If you didn't realize that it's something that God has accomplished for you and you're deceived into thinking that you've accomplished something of yourself, you'll boast in yourself. You'll boast in what you've done. Or, if you're not quite there, you'll boast in what someone else is accomplishing for themselves. But see, when you see that it's been done for you, the only conclusion is to praise God. Amen. To have exceeding joy and peace in his presence. That's the only conclusion. Well, it's a new way. Is <laughs> The new covenant is not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand out of the land of Egypt. It's not like that one. Because this covenant... It's different. The covenant is not based upon what man must do, but based upon what God would do through Christ. See, what the law could not do, God did. The law, in fact, any law, is an approach to God in which acceptance is based upon the ability of man to to completely satisfy whatever those obligations may be. But see, this is a new way. It's not like that. The man that doeth them shall live by them, the law says. And so herein lies the insufficiency of the covenant to bring man to God because man failed to do them. And because of this, he never had a clear conscience before God. Only a reminder of his sin. I guess that's if he was honest. And man is not able to effectively serve God without a clear conscience. Instead, he's only going to hide from him. Now, Scripture says, that the letter killeth. And the illegal, illegal approach to God still kills, still produces death. <clears throat> Those who are subject to a form of Christianity in which its basis in what man must do will find out that the people are generally failing to uphold it. They're generally plagued by a guilty conscience, and they're always feeling the necessity to do more, and yet the inability to do it. And while they may call this Christianity, it's more of a resurrected old covenant. It just has a different name and a different set of commandments is all. But see, there's a law of faith in the Son of God. This is a new way, which Christ inaugurated for us. It's not an approach to God on the basis of obedience to law, to the law of God, but it's on the basis of faith in the Son of God. And while we're not trying to minimize obedience, we're simply recognizing that true obedience has to start with faith. And where the law caused men to run and hide from God, the new covenant causes men to enter into the holiness with, or into, into the holiest with boldness. Man is no longer offering sacrifices in order to please God. He's offering himself as a thank offering because, of what, because God is pleased. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And so in view of this, we enter into the holiest of all with boldness, knowing that God is well pleased with Jesus. And our sins and our iniquities are remembered no more. Now this new way is, it's a better way. A a new way was necessary. We were talking about something being done for us. This was was a, a necessity because of us. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would then be no place sought for a second. But finding fault with them, he says, Behold, days are coming when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Finding fault with them. See, this is a better covenant. A new covenant is a better one. The old one didn't give life. If there had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness would have been based on the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. 
and the old way could not remove sin. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats that they should take away sin. The new way is better. And of course, it's, it's Christ who's doing this, for he makes all things new. What man needed was not a new set of rules, not new procedures, not a new list of Ten Commandments. What they needed was to be made new. See, the fault was within them, not without. And it was they that needed to be changed. Salvation, God's salvation addresses that very issue. It's not just a new set of commandments. He addresses the issue that the problem is with the heart. The problem was within us. And so he provides a new and living way in which those in Christ are made new and they're made living. For in Christ all things are become new. And if anyone is in Christ, he's a new crea creation. Amen. <clears throat> and that is all that matters, really. <laughs> all that matters is that you're a new creation. For neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. For in Christ, Jews and Gentiles are reconciled to one another and reconciled to God as one new man. Amen. <clears throat> We're given a new heart, a new spirit. You'll see that in the, in the new covenant, everything's new. You got a new man, you got a new heart, you got a new spirit put within you. We're given a new man that after God's created in righteousness and true holiness, put him on, and he's being renewed in knowledge. You see, we've come to Zion with joy upon our heads and a new song in our hearts. Amen. We look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, wherein we'll be given a new name which only the Lord himself knows and gives. I don't know if this is going to come across the right way, but I don't know how else to say it. Everything remains new. What I mean by that is it doesn't grow old. And it's not as though we have a new thing, but, you know, in a couple years it's going to get old, so we've got to come up with something else. Everything remains new. You understand what I mean by that? Amen. We're being renewed, renewed day by day. That which is on this new and living way stays new. It stays fresh. It's currently useful and will always be that way. That which pertains to God never gets old. The things of the Spirit never become dull or boring. And, by the way, if that happens to you, you've got something else. Because the new and living way doesn't produce that. It just doesn't. His provisions, his comforts, his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Now, in contrast to that, traditions and philosophies, now they grow old. Worldly religious systems that are not of God, are only, they're just a fabrication of the true Jesus, of the true spirit, and of the true gospel. They're not really another gospel. They're just a perverted version of the true one. The result of this is that they grow old. You may have been subject to this. If, if, someone, if someone hasn't embraced the gospel, I'm talking in, in the church now, what they'll do is they'll have to create something new every other month to keep things fresh, to hold the attention, because it's growing old. The new and living way doesn't grow old. It stays new. They will gain, that is, man-made religion. It's going to come and go with trends of the culture and the fashions of the world. They'll gain, gain prominence for a time, but in fact they lack substance, and they will be revealed, <laughs> and they'll die off. You might as well just throw them off now. The religious mechanics and routines that have a show of wisdom, but fail of the grace of God, they cannot sustain, they cannot sustain the soul. They cannot help. They're not neutral. They're actually a hindrance. They're a distraction to the real thing. And the reason is simple. They are a way that has not been consecrated by the Lord. Amen. Therefore, he's not in it. And even though they will make attempts to keep people attentive by ever-changing agendas and catchphrases, they cannot mask the fact that spiritual life cannot be sustained by worldly means. Amen. Amen. And this isn't anything new, brethren. <laughs> this is the lot of man. Man has always been trying to do this. In response to this new way spreading throughout the apostles' ministry, Gamaliel stood up and spoke, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves that ye intend to do nothing as to touching these men. For before these days, Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400 joined themselves, remember him? He was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, 
Well, they were scattered and brought to naught. And after this, another man rose, Judas of Galilee, in those days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, and he also perished. <laughs> all flesh is grass, just withers. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. I see, Gamaliel was on to something, I don't know if he knew it. But he said, now I say unto you, refrain from these men, let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But <laughs> if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Amen. Less happily ye be found fighting against God. <laughs> See, this is how it is. Just let it go. If it's of man, it's just going to perish anyhow. But it's of God, you're going to, well, you better get on board. That's just the way it is. Amen. See, this way remains effective. Jesus inaugurated a new and living way, a way that never gets old, never fades away. There's no need for a change with a high priest or a law or the message. The new way remains. The same message that turned the world upside down then is the same message that turned the world upside down now. <clears throat> Despite what the philosophers and debaters of our day may suggest, there really is no need to change the message in order to conform it to the culture or to the ages or genders. See, the gospel transcends all that. It really comes down to whether you believe it. Whether the gospel is the power of God unto salvation or not. Where it's not believed, you'll just come up with a new one. You've got to change it. They might not understand. Well, see, the message is spiritually discerned. <clears throat> and God can make that work. The way that Jesus made to the holiest and to the Father is a new way. And it's going to stay new, current, and practical until the day of Jesus. New and living way. Well, see, let's talk about living. I like talking about life. Life speaks of activity. Those who are alive are responsive. Being able to hear and respond appropriately. Where once the gospel of the glory of Christ was foolishness to them, now in their hearing, it's the power of God unto salvation. See, now they're alive. That's the difference. And where once the word of God caused them to harden their hearts, it now causes them to receive it engrafted to the saving of their soul. See, it's, that's what livelihood can do. It can accept the things that are alive. Where once the Word of life brought about harsh rejection. It now brings about eager obedience. Why? Because they're now alive to God. And they agree with the law of God after the inward man. Those alive to God have knowledge of him. <laughs> that seems simple enough. They understand his ways. <clears throat> they're engaged in what he is doing. See, they're active. They're alert, awake, vibrant. His thoughts of them are more numerous than the sand of the ocean on the seashore. This is, the, this is how living people respond. See, this way is a new and a living way. And the people on it, that is the people in the new covenant, they've been made new. And they've been made alive. They're living. They're not just hearers, they're doers. Living things are able to move, they're active, they do things. Those in the New Covenant are not spectators. They're participators. They're being used of the Lord, and they're actually workers together with him. And their use, utility actually increases. You, you've, you've experienced this. The, the longer you're with him, the more, the more utility you have, the more useful you become. This is a great contradiction to what we see a lot of places. Those who are alive are productive. They bear fruit. For that which is living, living branches, that's what they do. Living branches, they, they bear fruit. Branches that are dead or fruitless, they're actually cut away in order that, to benefit those who are living. So that they will be more fruitful, more productive. The new and living way, it actually, it actually promotes life. The new covenant, that is. What, what Christ is doing actually aids in living, actually adds to our life. It is not as though you've been made alive and now you're left to your own to, to stay alive. What God offers, that is all things pertaining to life and godliness, they benefit you. They help. God will not use something dead in order to give or sustain life. This is even true of the Lord Jesus. And I don't want to minimize his death, but it's because he lives that we also live. 
the way itself is conducive to life. Dead things offer no help. That is, they do not aid us in our walk with the Lord. Living things do. This living way actually adds to life and to those upon it. That is, those who are in the new covenant are not left by themselves to stay alive, to maintain their own life. The covenant itself is designed to nourish them in this regard. Where the law, which was a ministration of death, offered no help to the people, the new covenant is a ministration of the Spirit in which grace uh, aids us in this living way. The way is living and the way is life-giving. <laughs> and just as everything, everything in Christ is new, everything in Christ is also living. Amen. You see, God is the God of the living. <clears throat> Therefore, anything associated with him, those things which are acceptable to him, they're also living. Nothing dead is able to travel upon this new and living way. Anything that is dead will eventually be thrown off by the Lord, so it's like your job to get rid of it now. Just throw it off. God himself is living. He has life in himself. He said, I am that I am. He is the living God, the living Father, and the one in whom we live and move and have our being. The Spirit. The Spirit gives life. I'm showing you everything in the new covenant is living. The Spirit gives life. Jesus is the living stone, the living one, the bread of life, the one who gives living water. He is the resurrection and the life. And those in Christ, they have been quickened. That is to say, they've been made alive. They're living stones. They're alive to God. They have eternal life. They possess a well that actually springs up to everlasting life. And no doubt, they once were dead. <laughs> they once were a valley of dry bones. You see, but now they're a mighty army. Indeed, these bones do live. What about the rest of the angelic host? They're living. Angels are living, living, living creatures, living beasts. Everything, everything's living. The message itself, they're words of life. Amen. Messages. The word of God is living. So therefore, the exhortation goes like this. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who heareth come, and let him who athirst come, and whoever will, let him take the water of life freely. It's a living way. So what of a dead church? <laughs> does, this, does this make any sense? If there's a dead church, then strengthen the things that remain, if there be any things that remain. That's what Sardis was told. What a great contradiction it is for those who have the reputation of being alive but are really dead. This way is a living way. Everyone and everything on it is living. Those who are dead, they, they, just, they just must be born again. That's all. Those who, those who slumber will just arise from the sleep. Wake up. Now, I, I know it's appalling to you just as it is appalling to me. That there's the church in general now, in large part, is dead. A lot of what you see is dead. I'm talking about the church. <clears throat> but it's even more appalling to me that this is generally accepted by the people. And even by those who are sensitive. That's just the way it is. <laughs> That's the word that's spoken. It's just like this everywhere. I'm holding out for something better. It's not like that in heaven. Amen. It's not like that in Christ. And so if it's like that everywhere, I'm going to go someplace else. See, that's how it is. Amen. Because it's a new and it's a living way. This is what Christ died for. Are we going to accept something, a fabrication, something that's actually not living, and call it by his name? No. It ought not be so. Why do you seek the living among the dead? <laughs> you see, full provision has been made. The frailty of the flesh required more than just commands. More than just information and more than just instruction. We needed a way. We needed a living way. And praise God, the Lord's Christ has consecrated a way for us. I'm just going to leave you with an exhortation to draw near. There is now no more separation between you and God. Heaven is open. We are exhorted to draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Just draw near. Jesus has consecrated a new and living way. It's a way into the holiest, into the very presence of God. It is a new way. It's far different than any other. And on which all things become new. 
is a living way characterized by vitality, increase, and abundance. It is the consecrated way that Jesus has made for us. Brethren, do not settle for anything else. The way is not a church. It's not a pattern. It's not a movement. It's not a routine. It's not he he consecrated a new and living routine. That just takes the life right out of it, and it should. It's a new and living way, not a system of ordinances or steps that must be strategically taken. It's far better than that. It's a way that God has made. It's a new and living way, and Jesus, I guess, summarized it so plainly when he simply said, I am the way, and no one comes to the Father but by me. God bless you.